just out of interest, um, Solaris 11 also supports uh, CIFS, which is Microsoft file sharing, both as server and client, uh, instead of using Samba. So this is support that's built in, and that will be covered on the full five-day transition course. Okay. As far as NFS is concerned, things have changed a little bit. So you might approach a Solaris 11 system, log in as a root, and try sharing file systems, and find it doesn't work in the same way that you're used to with Solaris 10, which can be a little bit annoying and frustrating. But bear with it, because although facilities have changed, it, there's not a great deal extra to learn, and you, you, you will also notice that things have improved a little bit too. Another key feature in Solaris 11 uh, is that zones, uh, Solaris containers if you like, can now be NFS servers, which uh, was not possible in Solaris 10. Okay. Now as far as sharing ZFS file systems is concerned, there's uh, two stages involved rather than a single stage. Uh, in Solaris 10 where you have to set the share NFS property. That is still the case with Solaris 11 but the actual share details, the machines with which the uh, share is being shared for example, um, are now contained within the uh, share property for a ZFS data set. And please note the etc DFS DFS tab file is exist is it does exist but is no longer used okay now if you're in a bit of a hurry and you want to share uh, NFS file systems quickly you can actually do it with the share command so if I create a pool if you look on the right hand window I'm logged into a Solaris 11 system here which is actually a logical domain and I'm going to create a pool Then I'm going to create a file system, or if you like, a ZFS data set within it. Called Data2. And then I'm going to share it without changing any of the properties and without previously having NFS enabled. Notice how I put the mount point name rather than the pool name. If I now type share, I can see I'm sharing uh, slash lake slash data2. And there I can see the mounts. Okay. Also, the appropriate system service known as NFS slash server is running online. Okay. That makes life nice and easy. And in fact, the share properties have actually been set within the Z data set. There we go. A ZFS get share lake slash data to. And you can see that the share property is set. Okay. Rather complicated looking set of share options, but we'll... Uh, see how to set them very shortly. I can also unshare notice I have to use the proper Solaris path for that rather than the data set name okay. and if I do a ZFS get again that's now gone. However the NFS service is still running although it's not sharing anything now, that's one way of doing it, but if you like, the proper way is setting the property share yourself. And uh, this is how Oracle recommend that you do it. The share command is really just put there for compatibility. Okay. So, if I set ZFS set space share equals name equals data2. The name doesn't really come into it by the way, it's the path that we're interested in. Path equals slash lake slash data2 comma prot equals NFS, the protocol. Bear in mind that we could also be sharing using CIFS and in fact we could share both at the same time. 
and then in this case we specify the data set name. You have to remember when to use the mount point and when to use the data set name. And there you can see the information being printed back. Now, generally speaking, um, if NFS wasn't running, that share, uh, the share NFS property uh, wouldn't be set. But because we used the share command earlier, in fact, the, sh the share NFS property, which determines whether the share can be seen, should be on. There we go. So that share should be available, which it is. Normally, the share NFS property would be off. And so we'd have to set the share NFS property, as you can see on the left-hand side here, to on, and that would publish the share. It would make it available. So the share would not be available until you do that. And then we can get the property, as you can see, on the slide and also over here. There's numerous other things you can do. Uh, you can unpublish a share, so the share property still remains, but uh, the thing won't be shared. Nothing shared, no share NFS, but the share property will still be there. As you can see. So it's now a two-stage process. Set the share property and then publish the share by setting share NFS equals on. And the NFS server services are then providing that share. You can remove a share if you look on the left-hand side here. You can remove a share with ZFS set minus C share equals name equals data to. That's actually removing all the properties from the share. You can remove individual bits, which we'll see shortly. And of course you can set complex shares where you're deciding perhaps who to share with. Here's an example uh, that most people will be able to relate to their experiences on Solaris 10. Set the share name, set the path, set the protocol, which is what we did before, but this time we're, we're defining the machines, the hosts that can actually access the share by putting comma RW, read write, for buzz, colon woody, colon lotus, which are three other hosts. Comma, root equals woody, would allow the root, the administrator command on root, woody, uh, root access to that share. And then finally, the data set. So a little bit more complicated, slightly different format, but we're all on familiar ground here because we've, we've all had experience of this on previous Solaris systems. So just getting used to the new syntax. There's some more examples on the next page. You may have been wondering, can I share tool machines on the network? Well, at the top there, there's an example using the at notation. And then the second example is something uh, that a lot of Solaris administrators will want to do when they're sharing things like Solaris distributions. And that is making the share available as a root, but in read-only mode, using the non equals zero facility. And lastly on the page, I am setting a share uh, to remove the property a non equals zero. So slightly different syntax to what you might be used, for, uh, used to, but nonetheless a useful example if you go to try it on a Solaris 11 box. Uh, NFS sharing inheritance c comes in a little bit and is quite confusing, so I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about that before I finish the presentation. Um, when you uh, cr create a new share, usually it's not inherited unless the share NFS uh, option is uh, set to on. Okay, let me give you an idea. If I create, start creating uh, this data set, I'll do a destroy on the data set we previously existed. I need to use the correct command. It's more like it. And then I'll create uh, the pool again. 
And then the second example is something uh, that a lot of Solaris administrators will want to do when they're sharing things like Solaris distributions, and that is making the share available as a root, but in read-only mode, using the non equals zero facility. And lastly on the page, I am setting a share uh, to remove the property a non equals zero. So slightly different syntax to what you might be used for uh, used to, but nonetheless a useful example if you go to try it on a Solaris 11 box. Uh, NFS sharing inheritance c comes in a little bit and is quite confusing, so I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about that before I finish the presentation. Um, when you uh, cr create a new share, usually it's not inherited unless the share NFS uh, option is uh, set to on. Okay, let me give you an idea. If I create, start creating uh, this data set, I'll do a destroy. on the data set we previously existed. I need to use the correct command. It's more like it. And then I'll create uh, the pool again. And then I'll create some data sets within the pool. Then I'll create some data sets at lower levels. And then we'll have a look at the share property. And we'll have a look at the share as well as the share NFS. Nothing there. So the share NFS is off, no shares. Now we'll set a share on Lake uh, Data 2. Same as before, but we're going to do it slightly more complex this time. So sharing with my three machines. Let me just move that over a little bit. Buzz, Woody and Lotus. And giving root access... to Woody on lake slash data2. Okay. Now if I do a get minus r share again I've set it on lake data2 but it's not been inherited by the lower level data sets. Uh, the share properties as you sh would understand have to be sh set individually on those lower level shares. It wouldn't be very good if you just did a blanket set on all of those things. Now the share NFS property is still off so the share isn't published. Okay, although the, the share is set. So let's see what happens If we create a lower level new data set, work three, and then look at the share again, nothing set for the new data set either. Now, if we share the uh, data set by setting this, if we publish the share, we can ZFS set share NFS equals on lake slash data2 and if we do another get that uh, file system is now shared again but the lower level data sets aren't however with the share NFS property on Oh, by the way, of course, we could set the share properties and set share NFS on to the lower levels too. But uh, have a look at this. If I now create yet another lower level data set and do the get minus R once more, that has now been shared. Uh, and the share details are different. They haven't inherit been inherited. Okay. from the higher level data set there's a new share that's called a default share that the system 
has automatically set up for us. So that's known as a default share. So there we go. Things have changed a little bit in Solaris 11. Uh, but I hope that's given you a bit of a practical idea of how to get NFS up and running and some of the little twists uh, th that are provided now in terms of uh, sharing data sets and understanding how, how inheritance works. And that's all for this part of the seminar. Uh, there'll be a part two available which will look at the other ZFS features. But thanks for attending.